I don't know if you guys, like, keep up with the happenings of anime YouTube Twitter, but at least in the sphere that I have uh, become a part of, there's been a great amount of discussion over the last few days regarding what it means to actually be an anime fan. So, like, to what extent, if, if somebody, you know, like, to quote Nino's tweet, uh, which I'll put on screen, uh, if somebody, like, turns on an episode of Naruto and enjoys it, are they a fan of anime or are they just a fan of Naruto? You know, at what point does your fandom go past <clears throat> the show that you're interested in? Now, thinking about this while on sinus infection brain, so that's a lot of fun. I've tried to turn off the sunlight in rooms twice today, um, and it is not getting better. Uh, so bear with me. But I'm just getting very angry about... I'm not angry, frustrated. I'm getting very frustrated because whenever I see tweets like this, I'm think I'm in, I think back to like to like fans that I've talked to or I think comments that I've seen online particularly, especially in regard to stuff that isn't like mainstream or formulated for a specific or for like a broad audience, because it is very common where you see these things or where you see these anime that come out that are not like. They're even just, like, slightly parallel to the mainstream. People watch them, and then they don't know how to parse through it. And that bugs me, because they reduce the shows so much in their discussion of them. Like, for, I'll, I'll take an example, like, Boogie Pop. Boogie Pop, the most recent Boogie Pop, isn't even that, like, out of there, you know? It's, it's a little bit weird in its presentation. It jumps around a bit. Uh, cinematography is decent, uh, but it's not like this groundbreaking work of art cinema or of art anime or whatever. And yet, most discussion that I see from it or see about it, even with like more interested anime fans and more like educated anime fans, and, and with shows like it, is is very much along the lines of like LMG. That was so crazy. I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know how to, you know, I can't even, what the hell is this? I don't know what I'm watching. It's so weird and crazy out there. It's like, can you shut up for like five seconds? Like, it's not that difficult, okay? Like, I'm somebody who struggles mightily with reading between the lines and picking up on like, like esoteric themes and, and consistencies within a story. Within anything, within life, I struggle at reading between the lines. It ain't that hard for me to do with anime, and it isn't that hard for you to, to you to do either. You just, you, you're lazy, is what it is. One of my, I, it, it's just very lazy. Because whenever you are lazy, whenever you like watch this show and you're like amazed by it, that's cool, that's great, but you've got to go deeper if you want to talk about it. Because by talking about it in those incredibly reductive terms, by saying that like, it was just weird, or it was crazy, or it was... Uh, what's the word? What's the one word? Uh, trippy. I hate trippy. I cannot stand it whenever people describe shows as trippy. It's not trippy, okay? It's not like this sort of psychedelic experience that you that you would liken to getting off of a drug. You know, when people say, oh, what kind of drugs is this person on whenever he wrote this? That's so dumb, okay? Creative, creative thinking, creative presentation is not the product of drugs. It is not the product of being crazy. It is the product of being a really, really good artist who knows what themes they want to present and how to present them in a cool way, okay? And it's on, it's the duty of the viewer as the consumer of these, of these artistic works to instead of being like, oh man, I'm just, you know, I'm going to talk about this in incredibly broad terms and say that it was weird, crazy, and trippy and that I don't even know what happened. Can you figure it out? Can you like, go back into into the annals of your memory like you don't even have to rewatch it just like consider the things that you have seen on screen like watching the matrix is not a complicated experience yet somehow some way in one of my classes this last week we managed to have a discussion about it for an hour and 15 minutes it does not take an hour and 15 minutes to explore the baseline themes of the matrix okay like the matrix is a cool movie it's an awesome movie i love it but it's not that complex, okay? And people need to stop treating it and other words or other works like it that are just barely on the outside of what is considered mainstream as like this this paragon of esoteric presentation. I use that word a lot, esoteric. It's very important to me because a lot of the things that I consume and a lot of the things that uh, my friends consume 
are esoteric. They are geared towards a very specific audience. And what, what I really wish would happen is that people would consume these works and be more intelligent about them. Because the only way we're going to get more of them is if people are intelligent about them. Like, I'll bring back to Boogie Pop. You know, Boogie Pop is not a hard anime to comprehend, to wrap your head around. Uh, the story is very, um, it's very frontly presented. It's, it's straightforward. There isn't uh, a ton of, like, legwork that you have to do on the ground level where you're like, hmm, I wonder what's you know, what's even the point here? I mean, there's a, a supernatural phenomenon in this this world that supposedly isn't supposed to have any, you know, people are disappearing, and, you know, there's, there's connections to it, you know, these guys, you know, this guy has, like, the power to change people's hearts, and, like, it, you're supposed to be considering, you know, what it means to have an identity, you know, that's what Boogie Pop messes with, or at least this most recent adaptation does. You know, it's not, it doesn't take a, a scientist, a brain scientist, to figure that out, you know? So, next time you don't, you, like, next time you can't even, or next time you don't understand, like, think about what you've, what you've watched, okay? Because you don't need to do much more than that. If you think about what you've watched, generally speaking, you're gonna be able to come to a conclusion and be like, okay, these are the themes that I want to parse through, this is what has interested me about this work. Like, people who don't know what they like about a certain piece of work, I mean, if you like it that much, go back and rewatch it, you know? I just finished rewatching Fooly Cooly the other day because the first time I watched it, it was 2015. I had been into anime for like six months. And when I say into anime, I mean like I had watched my first anime six months ago. Hold on. Or no, okay, that's not technically true. I watched my first anime 12 months ago. But then there's a 12 month or there's a six month gap between my first anime and my second anime. So I'm going to just say six months ago. I had watched my first anime six months ago. So I had no idea what was happening. I had no concept of what I was seeing on screen. I watched all six episodes. They were funny. They were good. You know, slapstick, wild, comedy, all that. But if you don't know at least some deeper anime history, or you, know, you don't know what went into some of the shots, uh, some of the scenes, then a lot of the show is going to be lost on you and you're not going to enjoy it as much. Like, you might enjoy it uh, more along the lines of, like, a Nichijou sort of thing, where it's just fast-paced comedy, and, you know, you're enjoying that. But there's also just a deeper a deeper tonal theme, like, tonal, tonal theme. What am I saying? I can't just keep saying words. This is another thing that I, that I annoy myself with, is sometimes I will just say words, and they don't mean anything. And I need to stop doing that. Tonal theme? What the hell does tonal theme mean? There is a vibe. That's how I can describe it. There's a vibe in Fooly Cooly that you miss if you don't get the context. So if you don't know what happened in Fooly Cooly, give it a couple of years, go back and rewatch it. And so there's another school of thought that's like, okay, so why create stuff like that? Why create things that have to have context in order to be fully understood and enjoyed? Uh, it's just because it's fun, man. I mean, you think Fooly Cooly was made to be wide, extremely popular? No. You think you know, Evangelion was supposed to be the hit that it was? No. Okay? It's not. Uh, and, and I realize I'm referencing two shows by the same studio. But it's very important because I've been on a Gynax kick lately. Like, if you follow me on Twitter, I just watched Gunbuster. Gunbuster rules! You know? And it, even it's got some things that are presented differently. I would put Gunbuster in the category of shows that are just directly adjacent to what is considered mainstream. Because it's not totally mainstream. Like, you still got... Uh, a little bit of that Hideki Anno flair, because it's his first work. Especially in episodes 5 and 6, which are my favorite. Um, did, did, did Tsunamaki work on uh, um, Gunbuster? I want to say he did. Because I know, I'm pretty sure he did Die Buster, right? Yeah, he did Die Buster. I, I am on my computer, I can just look that up. Die Buster... Original music by director Kazuya Suramaki. Okay, so yeah, I should watch Gunbuster or Die Buster next. But you know, then there's the whole thing where I'm like, the ending of Gunbuster was perfect, and I don't want to mess with it. I don't know why people get on Gynax for their endings. Their endings have been great. Like all the Gynax endings that I've seen, they've been great. Okay, like Kill a Kill is classified as a Gynax ending, even though it's not Gynax. Or, and, uh, Gurren Lagann's got a Gynax ending. Yeah, it's, it's good. They're good endings, you know? 
and Gunbusters ending was good. You know, apparently there are two endings. There was a 6B episode option uh, where I was watching it, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna watch that, because I was thoroughly satisfied with how this first ending ended. You know what, I'll just make a whole video on Gunbuster. Point is, TLDR, which I don't know why you would have gotten to the TLDR if you hadn't watched all the way to the end of my 10 minute video. TLDR, watch cool things and then think about them. Because if you think about them, you'll know why they're cool.